Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to WBFR Playhouse of the Air. I am Jake Lawrence, the host of this program. The WBFR Playhouse of the Air dedicates ourselves to bringing to you, over the air, your favorite stories as foretold by the brightest stars in Hollywood and Broadway. And tonight is no exception, as we bring to you Charles Dickens's immortal Yuletide ghost story, A Christmas Carol. We bring you now to London, 1843, as we raise the curtain on act one of A Christmas Carol. Marley was dead to begin with. There's no doubt whatever about that. Old Marley was as dead as a doornail. Scrooge knew he was dead, of course. They were partners for many years. Scrooge was his sole executor, his sole friend, and his sole mourner. Scrooge never painted out old Marley's name. There it stood, years afterwards, above the warehouse door at the firm of Scrooge and Marley. What a tight-fisted hand at the grindstone was Scrooge, and the cold within him didn't thaw one degree at Christmas. Once upon a time, on Christmas Eve, Scrooge sat busy in his counting house. He kept an eye on his clerk, Bob Cratchit, who was in a dismal little cell copying letters. It was just before closing time when, through the door, came Scrooge's only nephew, Fred. Merry Christmas, Bob. The same to you, Fred. A Merry Christmas, Uncle. God save you. Bah, humbug. Christmas a humbug, Uncle. You don't mean that, I'm sure. I do. Merry Christmas, indeed. What right have you to be merry? What reason have you to be merry? You're poor enough. Come, then. What right have you to be morose? What right have you to be dismal? You're rich enough. Bah, humbug. Don't be cross, uncle. What else can I be when I live in a world of fools such as this? What is Christmas time for you but a time to find yourself a year older and not an hour richer? If I could work my will, every imbecile who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled with his own pudding and buried with a stake of holly through his heart. Uncle! Nephew! I'll let you keep Christmas in your own way. Let me keep it in mine. Keep it? But you do not keep it, uncle. Let me leave it alone, then. Much good may it do you. Much good has it ever done you. There are many things from which I've derived good and not profited from. Christmas among them. And I've always seen Christmas as a warm, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time. The only time in the year that I know where men and women can open their hearts freely and look at fellow people as fellow passengers to the grave. And though it has never put gold or silver in my pocket, I believe it has done me good, and dare I say, God bless it. God bless it indeed. Let me hear another sound out of you, Bob Cratchit, and you'll keep Christmas by losing your situation. As for you, nephew, you're such a powerful speaker, I wonder you don't go into Parliament. Don't be angry, uncle. Come dine with us tomorrow. No. But why? Why did you marry against my wishes? Because I fell in love. Well, because you fell in love. (laughs) Good afternoon. I want nothing from you. Why cannot we be friends? Good afternoon. I am sorry with all of my heart to find you so stubborn, but I will keep my Christmas humor to the last. So a Merry Christmas to you. Good afternoon. And a Happy New Year. Good afternoon. Merry Christmas to you and your family, Bob. The same to you, Fred. There's another fellow, my clerk. Fifteen shillings a week and a wife and children going on about a merry Christmas. I'll retire to Bedlam. Scrooge and Marley's, I believe. Have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley has been dead seven years ago tonight. You have the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge. Well, Mr. Scrooge, at this most festive season of the year, it is more than usually desirable that we should make some slight provision for the poor and destitute, who suffer greatly at the present time. Many thousands are in want of common necessities. Hundreds of thousands are in want of common comforts, sir. Are there no prisons? Plenty of prisons. And the union workhouses, are they still operational? They are. Still, I wish I could say they were not. The treadmill and the poor law are in full vigor, then? Both very busy, sir. I am very glad to hear it. As they scarcely furnish Christian cheer of mind or body, a few of us are endeavoring to raise a fund to buy the poor some meat and drink and means of warmth. What shall I put you down for? Nothing. Oh, you wish to be anonymous? I wish to be left alone. Since you asked me what I wish, that is my answer. I do not make myself merry at Christmas time, and I cannot afford to make idle people merry. I work to support the establishments that I have mentioned. They cost enough, 
And those who are badly off must go there. Many can't go there, and many would rather die. Well, if they would rather die, then they had better do it and decrease the surplus population. <sighs> it's enough for a man to know his own business and not to interfere with the business of others. Mine occupies me constantly. Good afternoon. Well. Show this woman the door, Cratchit. Yes, Mr. Scrooge. This way, please. It would please me greatly if I might contribute to your charity. Cratchit! Coming! You are a most generous soul, sir. Which is more than I can say for your employer. Cratchit! Coming! Merry Christmas to you. And to you, sir. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ now? our Savior it. was born on Christmas Day. Humbug! Off to with you, boy! Go and hunt someone Satan's else! Power went Mr. Scrooge, sir. What is it, Cratchit? It's near closing time, sir, and I wanted to ask... You wanted to ask if you could have off all day tomorrow, I suppose. If it's quite convenient, sir. It isn't convenient, and it isn't fair. It's only once a year. A poor excuse to go picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. But I suppose you must have the whole day. Be here all the earlier the next morning. I will, sir. You can count on me. Good day. And to you, sir, a Merry Christmas. Humbug. <laughs> And with that, the office was closed in a twinkling. Bob Cratchit went down a slide at Cornhill 20 times in honor of it being Christmas Eve. Then he ran home to Camden Town as hard as he could pelt to play with his family at Blindman's Buff. Scrooge took his melancholy dinner to his usual melancholy tavern, and having read all the newspapers and beguiled the rest of his evening with his banker's book, went home to bed. Scrooge's chambers had once belonged to his deceased partner, Marley. They were a gloomy suite of rooms where nobody lived but Scrooge. There was nothing at all particular about the knocker on the door. Scrooge had seen it there each and every day. But when Scrooge put his key into the lock of the door, he saw in the knocker old Marley's face. Its livid color made it horrible. As Scrooge looked at this phenomenon, it became a knocker again. Startled, he walked in and closed the door with a bang. He sat before the fire to take his gruel. Then came a clanky noise from deep down below, as if some person were dragging a heavy chain. And then the noise became louder, as if from the floor below. Then coming up the stairs, then straight towards his door. It's humbug still, I won't believe it. Then, without pause, through his door came the ghost of a man covered in long chains wound about him. A chain of cash boxes, keys, padlocks, ledgers, and heavy purses wrought in steel. Ebenezer Scrooge! How now? What do you want with me? Much! Who are you? Ask me who I was. Who were you then? You're particular for a shade. In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. Humbug! You don't believe in me. I do not. Why do you doubt your senses? B because a little thing affects them. A slight disorder of the stomach. You may be an undigested bit of beef, a crumb of cheese, a fragment of an underdone potato. There's more of gravy than of grave about you, whatever you are. Ah! Mercy! Dreadful apparition, why do you trouble me? Man of the worldly mind, do you believe in me or not? I do. I must. But why do spirits walk the earth, and what do they want with me? It is required of every man that the spirit within him should walk abroad among his fellow men and travel far and wide. And if that spirit goes not forth in life, it is condemned to do so after death. It is doomed to witness what it cannot share, but might have shared, and turn to happiness. Why are you fettered with chains, Jacob? I wear the chain I forged in life. I made it link by link and yard by yard. Would you know the weight and length of the strong coil you bear yourself? It is as long and heavy as this. Seven Christmas Eves ago, you have labored on it since. Speak comfort to me, Jacob. I have none to give. I cannot rest, I cannot stay. I cannot linger anywhere. In life, my spirit never roved beyond the narrow limits of my money-changing hole, and weary journeys lie before me. You must have been very slow about it, Jacob. Oh. Seven years dead and traveling all the time? Oh, captive! 
bound and double iron, not to know that no space of regret can make amends for one's life opportunity misused. But you were always a good man of business, Jacob. Mankind was my business. The common welfare was my business. Charity, mercy, forbearance, and benevolence were all my business. The dealings of my trade were but a mere drop of water in the comprehensive ocean of my business, Ebenezer. At this time of the rolling year, I suffer the most. Hear me. My time is nearly gone. I will. But don't be hard on me. Don't be flowery, Jacob. Pray. I am here tonight to warn you. You have still a hope of escaping my fate, Ebenezer. You were always a good friend to me, Jacob. Thank you. You will be haunted by three spirits. Is that the chance and hope that you mentioned, Jacob? It is. I think I'd rather not. Without their visits, you cannot hope to shun the path that I tread. Expect the first when the bell tolls one. Couldn't I just take them all at once and have it over with, Jacob? Look and see me no more. And look that, for your own sake, you remember what has passed between us. Jacob? Jacob! When Scrooge awoke, he found himself face to face with a strange figure with the stature of a child, and face with not a wrinkle, yet hair white as if with great age. Ebenezer Scrooge? Are you the spirit of whose coming was foretold to me? I am. Who and what are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? No, your past. What business brings you here? Your welfare. I am much obliged, but a night of unbroken rest would have been more conducive to that end. Your reclamation, then. Take heed. Rise and walk with me. Oh, no, 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 not out the window. I am not a spirit, but immortal and liable to fall. Bear but a touch of my hand upon your heart, and you shall be upheld in more than this. Come. Where are we, spirit? Where are you taking me? Do you recognize this place? Good heavens, I do. I was a boy here. This is my old schoolhouse. Your lip is trembling. And what is that upon your cheek? It is but a pimple. Lead me where you will. Do you recollect your way to school? Remember it? I could walk it blindfolded. Strange to have forgotten it for so many years. Let us go on. The school is not quite deserted. A solitary child, neglected by his friends, sits there still. I know that poor boy. I was so lonely. I wish I... Oh, but it's too late now. What is the matter? Nothing. There was a boy singing a Christmas carol at my door the other night. I should like to have given him something, that's all. Ebenezer! It's my sister Fan! Dear Fan. I've come to bring you home, dear brother. Home, little Fan? Yes, home, for good and forever and ever. Father is so much kinder than he used to be that home's like heaven. He spoke so gently to me one night when I was going to bed that I was not afraid to ask him once again if you might come home. And he said, yes, yes, you should, and sent me in a coach to bring you. And we're to be all together and have the merriest Christmas in all the world. You are quite the woman, little fan. Come with me, dear brother. <laughs> Always a delicate creature whom a breath may have withered. But she had a large heart. That she did, you're right. I'll not gainsay it, spirit, God forbid. She died a woman and had, as I think, children. One child. True, your nephew. Yes, Fred. Come, let us see another Christmas. Do you know this warehouse, Ebenezer? Know it? I apprenticed here. And look, it's my old master Fezziwig. Bless his heart. And throwing one of his Christmas parties. Yo-ho there, Ebenezer, Dick. Dick Wilkins, bless me, there he is. Dear, dear. Yo-ho, my boys, no more work tonight. Christmas Eve, Dick, Christmas, Ebenezer. Let's have the shutters up before a man can say Jack Robinson. Hilly-ho, clear away, my lads, and let's have lots of room here. Hilly-ho, Dick, cheer up, Ebenezer. Merry Christmas, one and all. Dance and be lively now. And Mrs. Fezziwig herself. Never will I forget her smile. My dear, you have done yourself the spread fit for the king himself. May I have this dance, my pet? Why, you may have each and every dance, my dear. Look there! It's Belle! Sweet Belle. So beautiful. Ebenezer, dance with me! And how we could dance! Was she your love? My one. My only. When was the last time you danced, Ebenezer? It has been years ago in the least. 
So long I can hardly remember. What I wouldn't give to join them right now. <laughs> <laughs> Why, a small matter to make these silly folks so full of gratitude. Small? Why is it not? He has spent but a few pounds. Is that enough to deserve such praise? It isn't that, Spirit. The happiness he gives is as great if it cost a fortune. What's the matter? Nothing in particular. Something, I think. No, I should like to be able to say a word or two to my clerk just now, that's all. Ebenezer, dance with me! Can't you see? I'm busy. Oh no, spirit, spare me this! There are tears in her eyes. I matter little to you, very little. Another idol has replaced me. What idol has replaced you? A golden one. There's nothing which brings you such passion as money. Dear Bill, that's not fair. I'm afraid it is. When we were engaged, we were both poor. <laughs> Was it better then? Better to be poor? Better at least to be happy. You are changed. You were another man then. I was a boy. You blame me because I've grown wiser. Have I ever tried to break our engagement? In words, no, never. In what then? In a changed nature, in an altered spirit, in everything that made my love of any value in your sight. So I release you from your promise. Bow. Oh, at first it may cause you pain to lose me, a very brief pain. Soon it will be dim like a half-remembered dream, an unprofitable dream. And you will be glad to be awake from such a dream. May you be happy in the life you've chosen, Ebenezer. Bell! Don't go! Ebenezer, where's your bell going? Oh, Mrs. Fezziwig, I fear she has fallen out of love with me. Why not go to her? I'm unsure I have the power to change, to be the man she wants me to be. Time flies, my boy. We must hold on to those we love. I fear it may be too late for that. My dear, it's never too late. Perhaps she's rejoined the party. Let's go see. No, but thank you. I, I have my accounts to return to. Suit yourself, dear. I wish you nothing but happiness. Spirit, why do you delight to torture me? I show you only the shadows you must see. Spirit, tell me, whatever became of my fair bell? Years have passed. Bell is married. The man she's married is by her side now. That might have been me. She might have called me husband. Spirit, please, show me no more. Listen to them, Ebenezer. Belle, I saw an old friend of yours this afternoon. Who was it? Guess. How can I? Try. I don't know. Mr. Scrooge? Mr. Scrooge it was. I passed his office window. It wasn't shuttered. And there was a candle inside, so I could scarcely help seeing him. There he sat alone. And I hear his partner is on the brink of death. But there he sat alone, all alone in the world, if I do believe. Spirit, remove me from this place. I told you these were the shadows of things that have been, that they are what they are. Do not blame me. Remove me. I cannot bear it. Take me back. Leave me. Haunt me no longer! The WBFR Playhouse of the Air's production of A Christmas Carol will return after a word from our sponsor. For sensible and satisfying gifts, there's nothing more appropriate than fine food. And for both gift giving and your Yule dinner, there's nothing more delicious than Old London Extra Fancy Fruit Cake. That's right, Sally. There's simply no rival to this magical concoction, crammed full of fruits and nuts, providing rich, delicious eating for everyone and making it America's most wanted Christmas gift. Luscious, tender, and bursting with juicy goodness, Old London Extra Fancy Fruitcakes are a boon for fruitcake lovers. What's more, they're available in gaily wrapped, five pound and 10 pound gift cartons. They're just the thing when unexpected guests arrive and make wonderful gifts too. Ideal for your business associates, family, friends, neighbors, shut-ins, and those in the armed forces of the US of A. And they're perfect for filling stockings and your holiday buffet boards too. So as a grand finale to your Christmas feast, why not treat the family to the most appetizing fruitcake ever discovered? And why not have the joy of this festive holiday season continue long into the new year? Well, 
It's can. When you send a hair raisin parade of fruitcake year round with the old London extra fancy fruitcake of the month club. And the fun starts off with a deluxe 20 pound fruitcake basket for Christmas morning. Then the enchanting spectacle continues month after month after month, providing thrills and surprises for everyone. Each superb delivery will make eyes pop open anew, mouths water, and hearts quiver with joy. Your unforgettable gift will be sure to delight, keeping family and friends happily reminded of you all through the year. The old London Extra Fancy Fruitcake of the Month Club is one of the USA's largest chippers of Extra Fancy Fruitcake, with over 25 million please givers since 1919. Why not join them? When you want to do your duty, slip your honey something fruity, you'll get sugar from your cutie. Buy a London extra fancy fruitcake, rum soaked cherries, wet her whistle, whiskey peaches, prime her kiss, it'll make you lucky under the missile. Buy a London extra fancy fruitcake. Make your Yuletide greeting sumptuous eating with Old London Extra Fancy Fruitcake. Order today for Christmas morning delivery. And now we return to WBFR Playhouse of the Earth's production of A Christmas Carol, starring Freddie Fillmore and Sally Applewhite. When the clock struck two, Scrooge awoke in his own bed just in the nick of time to greet the second spirit Jacob Marley had promised. He wondered from where the specter would appear, as he did not wish to be taken by surprise. Then he became aware of a great blaze of light from the adjoining room. He got up and shuffled to the door. It was his own sitting room, but it had undergone a surprising transformation. The walls and ceiling were hung with living, green, and gleaming berries, heaped up on the floor to form a kind of throne, where turkeys, geese, game, puddings, barrels of oysters, and bowls of punch. Upon this throne sat a jolly giant with a glowing torch in the shape of Plenty's horn, which he held up to shed its light upon Scrooge as he came peeping around the door. Come in! Come in, Ebenezer, and get to know me better, man. Who are you? I am the ghost of Christmas present. Come in! You have never seen the like of me before. Never? You're different than the other spirit. You're, you're tall, almost a giant. And that great torch you carry. Its light pours into homes of rich and poor alike. Spirit, take me where you will. Last time I went against my will, and I am learning a lesson which is working now. If you have anything to teach me, let me profit by it. Touch my robe, and we are off. Where have you brought me, spirit? To a humble dwelling on a humble street. It's humble enough. Yet, there is happiness there. Who are these people, spirit? The woman and the children. They are the family of your clerk, Bob Cratchit. His wife lays the table for Christmas dinner, and there, assisting her, is her son, Master Peter Cratchit. Oh, I, I see. I take it you have never seen them before. I have not. Listen to what they say, Ebenezer. What has ever got your precious father, then? And your brother, Tiny Tim, and Martha weren't as late last Christmas Day by half an hour. Here's Martha, Mother. Hurrah, Martha. There's such a goose. Why, oh, bless your heart alive. My dear Martha, how late you are. Well, we'd have great deal of work to finish up last night and clear away with this morning, Mother. Well, never mind so long as you're here. Sit down before the fire, my dear. Where's Father? Father's to church with Tiny Tim. They'll be along. How is dear Tiny Tim, Mother? Some days I think he's better. Others, I'm not all too sure. Oh, you mustn't think but the best, dear mother. We do what we must to keep our spirits high. Father's Here home! Here they are. Good evening and Merry Christmas. Martha, dear, we're so glad to have you. Merry Christmas, dear. And how did little Tim behave in church, Bob? As good as gold and better. I hope that people saw me there. Why do you say that, Tim? Because I'm a cripple. And if they saw my crutch, it might be pleasant to them to remember upon Christmas Day who made lame beggars walk and blind men see. God bless you, my son. Let us eat Christmas dinner, dinner mother. Right now, everyone to the table. I mashed the potatoes. And such a goose. I don't think there's ever been such a tender and flavorful goose cooked in all the days of the world. And oh, what a wonderful pudding. Baba, I'll say the grace. Thank you, dear. Spirit, tell me if Tiny Tim will live. I see a vacant seat in the corner and a crutch without an owner carefully preserved. 
Oh, no, kind spirit, say he will be spared. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the child will die. Amen. 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 Merry Christmas to us all, my dears. God bless us. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. God bless us, everyone. <laughs> and now, dear family, a toast to Mr. Scrooge, the founder of the feast. The founder of the feast, indeed. I wish I had him here. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast upon, and I hope he'd have a good appetite for it. My dear, the children, Christmas Day. It should be a Christmas Day, I'm sure, on which one drinks the help of such an odious, stingy, hard, unfeeling man as Mr. Scrooge. You know he is, Robert. No one knows it better than you do, poor fellow. My dear, Christmas Day. I'll drink his help for your sake and the days, not for his. A long life to him, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. He'll be very merry and very happy, I have no doubt. God bless him, Mother, and everyone! Here, here. Merry Christmas. We have one more stop, Ebenezer. We fly. This is the house of my nephew, Fred. Your dear sister's only son. She died while giving him birth. Yes, spirit. He took her from me. And you have always held that against him, have you not? Well, spirit, it isn't so simple as, why have you brought me here? Listen. And see, Ebenezer. <laughs> he said that Christmas was a humbug, and he believed it, too. More shame for him, Fred. They talk of me. He's a comical old fellow, that's the truth. Not as pleasant as he might be, but his offenses carry their own punishment, and I have nothing to say against him. I'm sure he's very rich, Fred. At least you always tell me so. What of that, my dear? His wealth is of no use to him, for he does no good with it. And I assure you, he has no such plan to benefit us with it. Laugh as you will, but I have no patience with him. I have, my dear. Why ever so? For I feel sorry for him. I couldn't be angry with him if I tried. Who suffers by his ill whims? Himself, always. Here, he won't accept our invitation to come and dine. And the consequence, he loses a dinner. Indeed, he loses a very good dinner. Well, I'm glad to hear that, darling, for I haven't the greatest faith in these young housekeepers. What do you say, Topper? A bachelor is a wretched outcast who has no right to express an opinion on the subject. <laughs> no, Topper! Do go on, Fred. Finish what you began to say. I was going to say that perhaps the consequence of him not making merry with us is he loses some pleasant moments. I give him the same chance every year, for I feel sorry for him. And he may rail at Christmas until he dies, but he will find me going there year after year to spread my Christmas humor, if it only puts him in the vein to leave his poor clerk 50 pounds. Now, Fred, I think we've heard quite enough of the poor old devil. How about a lighter mood, a parlor game, perhaps? Good idea. Game of cards? Let's play yes or no. How do we play it? It's quite simple. I shall think of something, and the rest of you will try to guess it. You can ask questions, but I will only answer yes or no. Have you thought of something, Fred? I have. Is it an animal? Yes. Does it growl and grunt? Yes. Does it walk the streets of London? Yes. Does it live in a menagerie? No. Is it a hippopotamus? No. An ass? No. A bear? No. Oh, I found it out! I know what it is, Fred! I know what it is! <laughs> what is it? It's your Uncle Scrooge! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> but Fred, I asked if it was a bear, and you should have said yes, as indeed he is. <laughs> <laughs> he has given us plenty of merriment. I am sure, and it would be ungrateful not to drink to his health. So a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to Uncle Scrooge, whatever he is. <laughs> he may not take it from me, but may he have it nevertheless. Uncle Scrooge. Uncle, Uncle Scrooge. Scrooge. Thank you, nephew. Hark! The hour has come. No, 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 not yet, not yet. There's still so much I wish to learn. These you will learn from another spirit, Ebenezer. <laughs> the WBFR Playhouse of the Air's production of A Christmas Carol will return after a word from our sponsor. I love shopping at Phipps! What a treasure trove! It's such savings, too! Look, there's Santa Claus! Welcome to Phipps Department Store, ladies and gentlemen. Step right up to see Santa Claus himself. 
Oh, oh, oh. Hello there, little lady. Hiya, Santa Claus. And what would you like for Christmas? I'd like a Lady Fanny Happy Top Baby doll. The doll with the soul. Why, she's dressed in fine organdy baby clothes, trimmed with lace and ribbon with undies to match. And if that ain't enough, her sweet little head and arms are virtually unbreakable. And doesn't the Lady Fanny Happy Tot Baby doll, the doll with the soul, cry real tears too? I'll say she does, just like the tears of joy that will be streaming down the face of every little girl and boy who finds a Lady Fanny Happy Tot Baby doll of their very own under the tree this Christmas. Well, why don't you be a good little girl and go bring your mommy and daddy on an elevator ride up to Phipps's fourth floor in Toy Town, where they can find a wide selection of Lady Fanny Happy Dot Baby Doll, the doll with the soul, on sale. <laughs> and at only $4.95, they won't find a better price in town. Ho, ho, ho. Right this way, little fella. Santa Claus is ready to see you now. <laughs> see Santa Claus, how's tricks, how's tricks? Swell, squirt. And what would you like to find on your family's tree on Christmas morning? I'd like a large screen RCA picture television set. Why, it's a miracle of modern entertainment. A front row seat at plays, movies, news, and sports events. This gift will be cherished long. Well now, a large screen RCA Victor television set may seem a rather extravagant gift for a little boy. But you can tell your mommy and daddy that only set them back about $5 a week when they use Phipps' easy payment plan. Say, even I can afford $5 a week with the money from my paper out when doing odd jobs for the neighbors. And if a little boy can afford a mere $5 a week, who can? That's right. Thanks, Santa Claus. I love Christmas. I love my mommy and daddy. But most of all, I love Phipps' easy payment plan. See you on Christmas Eve. Right this way, little darling. Santa Claus is ready to see you now. Why, hello there, my dear. And what would you like for Christmas? Oh, Santa, I don't want very much. Just a good-looking flower cotton quilted robe with a good wide lap over, and a Monte Carlo game table, and a mink dyed squirrel cape. Well, aren't you a fancy little lady? I'll say I am. Just wait until my school chums get a load of me dripping in fine squirrel fur all the way from exotic Africa. Yes, sirree, ladies and gentlemen. You can find everything on your small fry shopping list and everything else at Phipps Department Store. Where they have the best prices in town. Take it from me. I ought to know. Whether it's a gift from Santa or a nifty wedding ring, toilet water for your aunt, a pipe for dad or Uncle Bing, lay away lingerie, baby guns or Faberge, fips, 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 fips. Fifth Department Store, the friendly store with the famous brands, open every evening until 9 p.m. until December the 23rd. <laughs> and now we return to the final act of WBFR's presentation of A Christmas Carol. When we last left Ebenezer Scrooge, he was awaiting the arrival of the third and final spirit as foretold to him by the ghost of Jacob Marley. Out of the darkness came a solemn phantom, draped and hooded, drifting towards Scrooge like a mist along the ground. Slowly, gravely, with an air of gloom and mystery, shrouded in a deep black garment, concealing its head, face, and form, nothing of it visible save one outstretched hand. Its presence filled Scrooge with a feeling of solemn dread. Am I in the presence of the ghost of Christmas yet to come? You are here to show me shadows of things that have not happened, but will happen in the time before us. Is that so? Ghost of Christmas future, I fear you most of all. But I know your purpose is to do me good, and I am prepared to bear your company. Will you not speak to me? Lead on, lead on. The night is waning fast, and it is precious time to me, I know. Lead on, spirit. I know this place, spirit. This is the exchange. I do business here. I know these men. Of what do they speak? 
Oh, I don't know much about it. All that I know is he's dead. When did he die? Last night, I believe. Why, what was the matter with him? I thought he'd never die. God only knows. What has he done with the money? Left it to his company, perhaps. I haven't heard. He hasn't left it to me, that's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's likely to be a very cheap funeral. For upon my life, I don't know of anybody to go to it. Suppose you make a party and volunteer. I don't mind going for lunch is provided, but I must be fed or stay at home. <laughs> <laughs> well, myself, I'm the most disinterested. For upon my life, I don't recall any time that we spoke, but there was one time where we met and we did speak. <sighs> Old Scratch has got his own at last. <laughs> it's cold, isn't it? Tis seasonal for Christmas time. Do you skate? <laughs> I'm not a skater, but my wife is. You must bring her out in the new year. <laughs> I know she would like that. Good day, sir. You as well. Of whom do they speak, spirit? Can you not tell me? Why do you not speak to me? Where are you going, spirit? I shall follow. Lead on. <laughs> The phantom led Scrooge to an obscure part of town which reeked with crime, filth, and misery. I have never seen this place before, spirit. And what on earth is that wretched stench? Do you not smell that, spirit? Have you a nose to smell? Far in this den of infamous resort was a low-browed shop where iron, old rags, bottles, and bones were brought, its floor scattered with rusty keys, nails, chains, and refuse iron. Secrets that few would like to scrutinize were hidden in the mountains of unseemly rags, fat, and bones. Sitting among his wares was the shop's proprietor, a rascal who went by the name of Old Joe. As Scrooge and the Phantom entered the shop, Old Joe was laughing and transacting business with... A laundress. A charwoman. And an undertaker's man. Let the charwoman be the first. And let the laundress be the second. And let the undertaker's man be the third. Look here, Old Joe, here's a chance. If we haven't all three met here without meaning it. You couldn't have met in a better place. <laughs> you were made for even long ago, you know, and the other two, they ain't strangers. And I'm sure there's no such old bones here as mine. <laughs> Every person has the right to take care of themselves. He always did. Who's the worst for the last of a few things like these? Not a dead man, I suppose. <laughs> no, indeed. If he wanted to keep them after he was dead, the wicked old screw, then why wasn't he natural in his lifetime? If he had been, he'd have had somebody to look after them when he was struck with death instead of lying, gasping out his last there all alone by himself. It's the truest word that ever was spoke. Open that bundle, old Joe, and let me know the value of it. Speak out plain. I'm not afraid to be the first, nor afraid for them to hear it. Let's see your plunder, man. Not extensive, I must say. A seal or two, a pencil case, a pair of sleeve buttons, and a brooch with no great value. Is that all? It's worth certainly a closer inspection. <laughs> certainly not. I'll give you half a crown. Are you bloody serious? I wouldn't give another sixpence if I was to be boiled for not doing it. Who's next? Feast your eyes on my booty, old Joe. <laughs> Make with it. Sheets and towels, a little wearing apparel, Two old-fashioned silver teaspoons, a pair of sugar tongs, and a few boots. Uh, I always give too much to ladies. It's a weakness of mine. That's how I ruin myself. Uh, I'll give you three crown. Now undo my bundle, Joe. What do you call this? Bed curtains? Oh, yes, bed curtains. You don't mean to say you took them down, rings and all, with him still lying there. Yes, I do. Why not? His blankets. Who else's, do you think? He isn't likely to catch cold without them, I dare say. I hope he didn't have anything catching it. Don't you worry about that. And you can look through that shirt till your eyes ache. You won't find a hole in it. It's the best he had, and a fine one, too. They would have wasted it on him to be buried in if it hadn't been for me. Somebody was fool enough to do it, but I took it off again. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your money, the lot of you. That's the end of it, you see. He frightened everyone away from him when he was alive to profit us when he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> Spirit. I see. I see. The case of this unhappy man may very well be my own. My life tends that way now. 
Merciful heaven, what is this? This is a fearful place. In leaving it, I shall not leave its lesson. Trust me, let us go. I understand you, spirit, and I would do it if I could, but I have not the power, spirit, I have not the power. Spirit, if there is anyone in this town who feels emotion caused by this man's death, show them to me now, I beseech you. Why have you brought me again to the house of my clerk? I see now that it is not the same. Why is it so very quiet here? My son! Mother, mother, please. My little son, tiny Tim. Mother, you mustn't. Father will be home soon. Don't let him see you crying. Yes. Oh, he's yes, late. Martha. He's late tonight. He walks much slower than he used to. And you'd have known him to walk very fast indeed with Tiny Tim on his shoulder. So have I, Mother. But he was late to carry. And his father loved him, so it was no trouble at all. Father! Bob! Good evening, my dear son. Sorry to be late. I hope you didn't worry. You're here, Bob. We're fine. I went to the churchyard today. I wish you could have come with me. It would have done your hearts good to see how sweet and green a place it is. But you'll go there often, I promised him that. I promised Tiny Tim we'd walk there on a Sunday. Father dear, it's God's will, Bob. I'm trying to understand it, my dear. My son, my little son, Tiny Tim. I loved him so. <laughs> Oh, that's cruel. Cruel! Spirit, can you not give me a ray of hope that I may change all that? That Tiny Tim may live? Spectre, something informs me that our parting moment is at hand. I know it, but I know not how. Spirit, help me. Who is this man that died? Is there no one to mourn the poor creature? No one to follow him to the grave? Perhaps we'll give him a green grave at least like poor Tiny Tim. Perhaps... Spirit, where are we now? Merciful heaven, a churchyard overrun by grass and weeds and these godforsaken crumbling gravestones. Spirit, before I draw nearer to the stone to which you point, answer me one question. Are these shadows of things that will be, or shadows of things that may be? Why do you not speak to me, spirit? What is on the grave to which you point? What name is upon it? Ebenezer Scrooge! Ebenezer Scrooge! Oh no, spirit, no! I'm not the man I once was! Why show me all this if I am past all hope? Your nature intercedes for me and pities me, assure me that I yet may change these shadows you have shown me by an altered life. Good spirit, tell me I can change these dreadful shadows you have shown me. I'll honor Christmas and try to keep it in my heart all the year. The spirit of all three shall strive within me. I shall not shut out the lessons that they teach. Oh, tell me I may yet sponge away the writing on this stone. I beg of you, spirit. I beg of you. I promise you, spirit. I have learned. God I beg of you. What? Where? Let nothing Can it be? Is this not my bedpost? Am I not in my own bed? I am. My red curtains are not gone. Here they are, rings and all. I don't know what day of the month it is. I don't know how long I've been among the spirits. I don't know anything. I'm quite a baby. Never mind. I don't care. I'd rather be a baby. Heaven and Christmas be praised. Clash. Clang, hammer, ding dong, the lustiest peals ever I have heard. Heavenly skies, sweet fresh air, merry bells, glorious, glorious. You there, boy, what is today? What is that, sir? What day is it today, my fine fellow? Why today? Today is Christmas Day. It's Christmas Day. I haven't missed it. The spirits have done it all in one night. They can do anything they like. Of course they can. Hello, my fine fellow. Hello. Do you know the poulterers on the next street over at the corner? I should hope I did. An intelligent boy. A remarkable boy. Do you know if they sold that prize turkey that was hanging up in there? Not the little prize turkey. The big prize one? What a delightful boy. It's a pleasure to talk to him. Yes, my buck. It's hanging there now. Is it? Go and buy it, will you? And have them send it over to Bob Cratchit and his family in Camden Town. And mind you, they're not to know who paid for it. Go on, hurry up, my lad, and here. Here's half a crown for your trouble. Straight away, sir. Deed I will, sir. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too, my lad. Never have I felt this way before. I am as light as a feather. 
I am as happy as an angel. I am as merry as a schoolboy. I am as giddy as a drunken man. A Merry Christmas to everybody. A Happy New Year to all the world. Hello, woohoo, hello. Merry Christmas, sir. Merry Christmas to you. A Merry Christmas to you both. Merry Christmas to you, sir. Hello, my dear woman, how do you do? Did you not call upon my office just the other evening in regards to that charity? Why, Mr. Scrooge, is that you? Yes, and I fear my name may not be very pleasant to you. I hope you succeeded. It was very kind of you. Allow me to ask your pardon, and will you have the goodness to accept the sum of... I prefer to whisper this. Lord bless me! My dear Mr. Scrooge, are you serious? If you please, and not a farthing less. There are a great many back payments included in it, I assure you. Will you do me that favor? My dear sir, I don't know what to say to such munificence. Don't say anything. Will you come and visit me? I will indeed. Thank you. I am much obliged to you. Bless you. I thank you 50 times. Merry Christmas. May I help you, sir? Is your master at home, my dear? Yes, sir. Where is he, my love? He's in the dining room, sir, along with the mistress. I'll show you upstairs. Thank you. He knows me. I'll just be in here, my dear. Now, just a moment. It's my business to announce those who come calling. Very well. You may tell Fred that his uncle is here to wish him a very merry Christmas. Why, bless my soul. Who is that? It's I, your Uncle Scrooge, here to wish you a very merry Christmas. Why, uncle? And a very Merry Christmas to you. Thank you, nephew. I've come to accept your very kind invitation to join you for dinner. I'm delighted. You are always welcome to dine here, Uncle. Thank you, dear Fred. I have but one more stop to make, and then I shall return to join you shortly. We look forward to it, Uncle. As do I, nephew. As do I. Deck the hall with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la. Now, children. Someone's at the door, Mother. Whoever could that be? I'll answer it. Is this the home of Bob Cratchit? Yes, it is. Why, whatever you got there. It's a delivery. Look, it's a turkey. Who would send us such a gift? I'm not to say, but it is all paid for. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Why, I've never seen such a turkey. Why, it's bigger than me. Oh. <laughs> The Cratchit family prepared their Christmas feast, and the centerpiece was the prize turkey brought to them by an unknown party. As the family was about to say blessing and partake in the meal, Tiny Tim noticed someone standing outside the window. Look! Who is it? Let me see. Well, well, Bob Cratchit. What do you mean by taking today off? I'm very sorry, Mr. Scrooge. It's only once a year. Now, I'll tell you what, my friend. I shall not stand this thing any longer. Therefore... I'm going to raise your salary. <gasps> Mr. Scrooge, are you quite yourself, sir? No, thank heaven I'm not quite myself. Merry Christmas, Bob, and I intend to help you and your family for a great many Christmases to come. Deck the hall with boughs of holly, ba la 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 la. Season to be jolly, fa la 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 la. Scrooge was better than his word. He did it all and infinitely more. And to Tiny Tim, who did not die, he was a second father. He became as good a friend, as good a master, and as good a man as the good old city knew, or any good old city or town in the good old world. And it was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well if any man alive possessed the knowledge. May that truly be said of all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, everyone! Oh, la, 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 la. There it is, ladies and gentlemen the presentation of A Christmas Carol from WBFR, starring Harry Jasbo Haywood. <laughs> Sally Applewhite. Jake Lawrence. <laughs> Lena Sherwood. <laughs> and Mr. Freddie Fillmore.
The WBFR Playhouse of the Air is brought to you this and every week by the Old London Extra Fancy Fruitcake Company and Phipps Department Store. Please stay tuned for a program of popular holiday music. We wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.